Hello, my name is Nick Hall and I'm a sales engineer with Clearview Imaging. Clearview Imaging work with Matrox Imaging, who are well known from the Matrox Imaging Library, or MIL as it is commonly referred to. The Matrox Imaging Library has led the way in imaging techniques and vision tools for over two decades now, and the latest development environment is MIL 10. There are many benefits to this latest library, including a range of 3D imaging techniques, groundbreaking dot matrix and string reading capabilities, and the added benefit of multiple prototyping tools. Today, one of the key features within the MIL library that we're going to look at is distributed MIL that allows us to utilize these new and powerful tools in a distributed architecture. There is a current shift towards Industry 4.0 and the Internet of Things, which is helped by the rise in availability of more powerful, lower end and better processing at lower cost. Many system developers are now considering a distributed processing architecture instead of the more traditional way of doing things, which is to try and cram as much processing power as possible into a single PC. This is especially applicable to multi-camera systems where splitting processing tasks through a cluster of embedded PCs and then bringing back all the results and data to a single HMI is seen as a very attractive proposition. Leveraging from our hardware to achieve this is one thing, but the key is having a software platform that allows developers to knit all the distributed processing together into one single system application. This is where Matrox Distributor Mill, or DMIL, comes into play. With DMIL, we're able to remotely access, monitor, and control multiple systems. This allows us to make changes to image capture, processing, analysis, display, and archiving, all from our remote location. And today we're going to look at an example to show this. Another key benefit of DMIL is the low overheads and efficient bandwidth usage achieved. In the diagram shown, we can see on the left hand side we have our master node or master system, and on the right hand side we have our slave node or slave system. Capture, display, and MIL library calls and processes are all passed between the various systems, with the executable application run from the master node, and each slave node able to run their own custom DLLs and functions. The system even allows our slave nodes to communicate with one another without involving our master system. These low overheads are essential when running CPU intensive imaging applications. The developer also has the ability to implement load balancing and failure recovery across their systems with a monitoring mode supporting connections to live mill applications equating to less downtime and more stability. The demonstration system we have set up shows how this works and the benefits of using DMIL. At this end we have our Matrox Foresight GPN system running an i7 processor, and this is our master system, or server. On this end, we have two slave systems. These are both POC 200 units from Neosis Technology, and these are running quad-core processors uh, Adam Bay Trails. On the left-hand side, we have this POC 200 slave system running a Windows operating system and connected to a USB 3 camera from Point Grey. On this side, we have our second slave system. This is running a Linux operating system and is connected to a Gigi camera from Point Grey. It is no problem to run both operating systems simultaneously within DMIL. Each system has been trained to track any particular object using our pattern matching tools. In this instance, we have a yellow button as our target object. The object's position is found and identified independently by each POC200 slave system. Once the position is confirmed, the results and coordinates are sent back to our master system, the Foresight GPM, via Giganet Etherbit cables. Remotely, from our master system or server, we're then able to view our results in the HMI as shown. On the left, our Windows machine, using the USB 3 camera, is showing a number of frames grabbed, the X and Y coordinates of our object, and the percentage, or score, at which the object is located. In the right-hand window, we can see the same information and results from our Linux machine. Now we have this information, we're able to perform further analytics, processing, or archive our results. Of course, this is all done remotely. The example that we have here shows a fraction of the capability available with DMIL. The key functionality of this technology is its scalability. We're able to take our applications further and utilize the latest high performance computing clusters and technology if required, where we can control several smaller PCs and smart cameras on the factory floor. What we have seen today shows us how using DMIL to utilize the tools and processing options within the Matrox Imaging Library can easily allow us to scale our software environment and get the most from our latest, low-cost, powerful embedded systems. With high bandwidth e efficiency and the simplicity to implement, it can be seen as a useful solution for a number of applications. 
I hope that you have found this demonstration worthwhile and I'd like to thank you for watching today. If you have any queries on DMIL or the Mill Library, please don't hesitate to contact us via our Contact Us page online or email us at info at clearviewimaging.co.uk. Thank you.